Yeah. All right. Uh, well, then we can go ahead and get started. I know that uh, you have a, a busy day ahead. You're about to get on the road. Uh, especially, you know, I, I appreciate you you coming again because um, the we we'd already filmed this, you know, as you remember. But our problem was we have a, we have a shared drive. Uh, somebody overwrote the backup with a previous version. It didn't have the video from our chat, so I still have uh, some some pictures and things that I'd like to show you. But that uh, that second part of our video was um, was was deleted. Uh, so live and learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you do, unfortunately, you know, that's technology for you, but yeah, I'm mm. happy always to jump on a call here. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's not a problem from my perspective, maybe more of a problem from yours. Uh, it's all right. I don't mind getting to talk to you a little bit more. We had such a great chat last time that it was, it's nice to be able to, to carry it forward and keep, keep, uh, keep discussing. And you know, speaking of all of these things, uh, I've noticed that you have been uh, you've been active on LinkedIn a lot lately. Uh, so have you been um, have you been following up on the the Nine RD projects? Have you been seeing what Nine R Nine Rivers is doing with the construction site? Uh, if so, I'd be really curious to get your your thoughts on how the progress is looking from your end. Every every day, I'm I'm, I'm more impressed with you know the development of the site. So you know, seeing that. You know, creation from the very beginning. So, you know, I think you know roughly figure wise, you've you've excavated something like fourteen thousand cubic meters just to level the land, and then on the stage three building, I think initially uh, the figures when I was talking to Jay was was around about seven and a half thousand cubic meters to to you know to to dig the pit. It's, it's exceeded that. So, you know, every day to see the development, to see the pace and the urgency, you know, being here in Scotland is uh, is quite fascinating. I think when you when you look at the scale of it as as well, Phil, you know, it's uh, it's it's really immense uh, and and such a you know, for for me, a, a, you know, an interesting project. In fact, uh, Maggie, who's uh, one of the team in in Long Yan, she's actually in the process now of uh, applying for my visa. So uh, I'm looking forward to coming over to the event in in July and meeting everybody and just you know seeing how far we've we've come in in such a short period of time. I, I've actually got access to. Uh, like I said before, I've got access to some of these pictures, and so I'd like to pull up a one that I thought was particularly interesting. Uh, let me see. Let me share this with you. Uh, can you see the Can you see the picture I shared? Yeah, I can actually. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna zoom in on here so you can see some of these uh, heavily pixelated faces, right? But I think you know that's that's you know one of the things for me is that. You know, whilst you see all this kind of work and development and you know the creation, it's you don't really appreciate the scale of it. And I think you know once you're you know images like this or actually being physically on site really you know bring it to life. You know, bring home the the work that's being done. Yeah. Well, one of the works that we've been trying to uh, proceed with on our site uh, the, the 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 brick wall let me let me show you what I mean um, it's the, the I think we're calling it the plenum we've been kind of interested in trying to get some names on the wall uh, have you have you gotten any of the bricks have you secured your uh, place of immortality on our whiskey wall funny enough I have uh... I've got, let me just see, I've got six bricks. So I've got uh, one for my wife, one for my son. And, you know, this has been such a kind of interesting project that uh, I've actually managed to convince some of my, you know, friends who are, you know, whiskey enthusiasts. There's six in total. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one more than I have. Uh, I got one just for me, but then 
uh, when I was talking to some of my friends about the the, the Nine Rivers uh, experience that I've been having, and they wanted to join, and so yeah, I think it's a really it's a really cool way, Phil, of uh, you know getting people involved in it. You know, you feel part of uh, you feel part of the project if you've actually got something that you can visibly see and I think that's true and I feel like with this particular project something that always keeps me coming back and wanting to put in more work is just that you actually get to see so many tangible or maybe not tan not yet but you get to see so many of these things uh start construction and you get to see so many of these personal touches that just take place like I thought this wall idea was just so fun just having I can't wait to visit the distillery and then just walk beside the wall and see all of these names uh, especially like you know, with you with six bricks, it feels pretty good. Like kind of being responsible for putting those names up there, it's pretty exciting. For me, it's always been you know an exciting project. I mean, I think I I first connected with Jay through you know social media, and uh, we get chatting as as you do, and you know we obviously come on to the, the subject of 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 whiskey and. You know, you, you know the fact of the, the distillery and everything else and uh you know I, at that point i said you know wouldn't it be cool that if if you were ever to have your own distillery and get people involved who were mm -hmm. who were whiskey enthusiasts and you know that's that's now came to fruition you know you can start to see these initial kind of what were just kind of friendly chats uh something developing from there that, you know, in the future will be quite frankly, quite amazing to be quite honest with you. And to be part of that is, is a real privilege. Yeah, and uh, since uh, you, you brought up Jay, I think uh, we can transition into uh, one big question that I have for you. Uh, and it's actually something that I've been getting a lot since our first, since that first part got released. Uh, I've been getting this question a lot, and it's uh, it's actually pretty simple. It's just why would anybody who has 43 years of experience at one of the biggest and most well-known names in, uh, with such an impressive title, such as a master of wood, uh, get involved in something that is widely seen as a very small grassroots ragtag group of whiskey enthusiasts? <laughs> uh all the way across the world in china i remember when jay and i were having a conversation and talking about how you guys were connecting and chatting and uh i i, I ended up googling your name because i didn't really know who you were I, I googled and linked in you and as i'm sure a lot of other people did and i was also really curious about this like you're you're a superstar jumping into this very fledgling project uh, so my surprise was was pretty big, uh, not a content creator perspective, but more from an investor perspective. Like I was also thinking, how much is this guy costing us? And I could only like think of uh, like a Chinese telephone number amount of numbers that would equate to the fee that you would incur bringing you into our project. So if you could elaborate a little bit on this, I'm just really curious. Oh well, I mean, firstly, for thank uh, you know, thank you for thinking that I'm a famous or a superstar. Uh, quite frankly, I, I don't see it that way. But uh, thanks very much for the compliment, anyway, uh, Phil. Uh, well, you know, I think probably there's you know a lot of people are intrigued. Like everything, there's a new project that starts up. Yes, I've been fortunate enough to be in the you know. In the Scotch whiskey industry for, you know, over forty years, uh, I can assure you it's uh, it's not telephone numbers uh, that we're talking about for for this project. Uh, you know, far from it. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not doing this, you know, voluntarily. Uh, you know, but for me, there's there's more than just the consultancy uh, for this project. Uh, when, when I decided to kind of step aside from from McAllen, it was is very much about projects like this to be to be involved in something which I think, quite frankly, is extremely interesting. Uh, I said when 
when the discussions with kind of G kind of stepped progressed, it was the whole fact of, you know, we're building a distillery, we're building a cooperage that's attached to it. You know, I think here we have a real opportunity to, to start to showcase uh, not not only in past manufacturing and, and, and you know distillation and, and you know spirit and, and it's it's a case of uh, you know showing showing people not you know, not just in China because you you're right Phil it's it, it's a it's a new emerging mar market with huge potential and and for me. I really just wanted to be part of it. It's uh, th this is the fun part about you know being able to be involved in things like this. Uh, I mean, it would actually be quite cool if we could uh, maybe get G on the call uh, and kind of further that discussion uh, even even more. Yeah, uh, we can definitely bring G into this. Uh, I will give him a call and see if we can get him in here. Gotta find his WeChat. He's been spending a lot of time at the construction site, so hopefully he answers. Yeah, why wouldn't you be at the construction site? You know, <laughs> I'm always amazed at how how quickly, you know, things are manufactured. It's this, you know, one yeah. day there's just <laughs> some land, and then you know, a few months later you've got this magnificent building and structure. Mm -hmm. China, especially like once something, once the paperwork gets finished, it's just, it just goes. They've been having a lot of rain over there lately. So he's oh, probably man. in his office, actually, if he picks up. <laughs> and is that hindered uh, the construction? I noticed in some of the earlier videos, uh, some of the flooding was there. Is that, mm -hmm. is that kind of natural for this time of year or is it a bit unexpected? Uh, it's not unexpected. Uh, they did plan for that in advance. Like in some of the construction videos and in the pictures, you can actually see uh, them preparing for the for the water uh, just in case this happened. So it's a good thing they did. Oh, he answered. He picked up. Hey, Jay, you're uh, you're on the line with uh, me and Stuart McPherson. Okay, sorry. I was just wondering what was going on. It sounded like we were talking about something quite relevant because we had a, a big storm uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, anyway, it's fine. Um, heck no. All right. Uh, we were actually uh, pretty curious if you could come get on the call with me and Stuart on Zoom. Uh, since it's raining over there, you're probably in your office, right? Uh, what do we do now? <laughs> do, do you somehow send me a link and then I pop in uh, from, from Zoom? Is that how it works? Yeah, I can send you a link. That's pretty easy. Okay. Yeah, I actually thought at one part that was maybe, you know, uh, G's own private swimming pool that he was building on site with the amount of water that was there. Right, like this whole thing was just some elaborate scam to get this enormous swimming pool in Fujian. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and Jay has asked for entry, so here he is. Yes, he should be popping up. Oh, oh wow, and it works. And Amazing. there he is. There we are. Hi, how are you guys? Yeah, fantastic. Well, Jay, good, good to see you. It's it, it sounds absolutely terrible. Have you have you have you got a bit of a cold? Yeah, I'll just I think explain I've got some that lag if, there. I'm not sure if my to, data is good enough. I, don't know, I was explaining to Phil earlier there that uh, for the last couple of days I've had a throat infection, so. Uh, if it wasn't 6 a.m. in the morning when I joined this call, I would maybe have had a hot toddy, but I'll need to stick with the water instead. <laughs> well, while, while, while I'm here, I might as well give you guys a, a quick look around and you can see what's going on. So uh, I'll show you show you what we're up to. We're not really working on site today. We had a big storm yesterday. so uh, And it's also um, Qingming Festival. So most of the staff have, have gone home to sweet tombs, I think it is. Um, I'm not sure how well this connection is going to hold out. Um, I'm using uh, whatever it is, 4G, 5G, don't know. Uh, the office is about 200 metres in that direction, but while I'm here, I might as well give you a quick tour. Um, so hang on a second while I try and flip this camera around. Uh, 
So this is building three. Bit of a view of how deep we've gone. Um, but this will be the one of the two four-story buildings, the buildings that we'll use for malting, milling, mashing and fermenting. Green pile, you can just see in the distance, that will eventually be the still house. It's a lot next to us where all the steel is, that will be building two. And then right in the far distance, just in front of that blue fence, that will be the first of a series of dunnages. So where we're standing right now underneath us in the sub-basement will be uh, two water storage tanks which will hold uh, 1.8 million litres of water. But essentially this wall here, this will be an underground tunnel that connects to the still house. Um, you can probably see a bit of the depth there. Um, essentially that concrete slab is about four meters thick. And I'll head out now and walk up towards what will be Stuart's new home. And that was last night's rainstorm. <laughs> kind of answers the question that everybody asks, uh, do you have enough water? <laughs> and then this is Stuart's new home. It's straight line all the way to that fence and then all the way to this blue fence over here. Um, and actually includes a lot of this chunk as well. So it's 6,666 square meters. Okay, give me a couple of minutes, Phil. I'm just gonna go back to the office and then I'll dial into the call again and we can have a bit of a chat, so. Hi. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's always like, he's always got so much energy. I don't know how he does it. I think that there's part of it that, you know, when, when, the, when there's something that you very much driven by and, and focused you do find that additional energy uh fair enough it catches up with you uh, sooner or later but you know in this particular instance you've got yeah. a discussion that was really amongst friends to uh you know quite frankly would be quite an amusing discussion to do. why don't we why don't we build a distillery and then obviously to see that uh, you know, progressing and, and you're part of that, it's uh, you do, I think, get additional energy from it. Yeah, that's fair to say. I think it's also just pretty cool being able to go from, this is a concept I have. Uh, and even before that, it was just kind of a conversation between people who have maybe had a little bit too much whiskey at one of the networking events it's like oh we should build our own distillery and then look at it now it's actually it's actually there is there is a hole in the ground it is being filled with concrete mm -hmm. and there's going to be a distillery there and it's, it's it's pretty surreal to be involved in this from from almost the beginning i i joined this pretty early I mean, you don't get that opportunity, uh, you know, here really, to be honest with you, in Scotland. It's either some of the, the major distilleries, you know, major distiller companies who are expanding production, or you will have, and it, and it has become a lot kind of more popular and, and apparent over the last few years as, as whiskey has became, you know, more popular globally, is that smaller kind of niche distilleries are opening up, which, you know, people are interested in because they bring something different for the consumer. And, and you know, this is why this project was so appealing. You, you know, you can be innovative, you can be creative, you can you can kind of push the boundaries with with new technology that's out there. And and we see that with uh 
some of the cast manufacturing projects in Cooperages and you know, already uh, already in place, but uh, you know having a Cooperage attached to the distillery is is quite unique, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, from everything that I've understood about Cooperages, and especially from our last conversation. It seems that attaching a cooperage to a distillery is something that not many players do in in, in this game. Uh, so it's a it's a really smart strategic choice if you have the resources in which to take advantage of it. And so I'm really curious to see how this ends up working for us. I'm just really interested in understanding more about the logistics and where everything comes from. That's right. You know, how do you piece all that jigsaw together? So you're so I mean, oh, and you... Jay is here, so I'm gonna let him in. All right, hi Jay. Jay is connecting to audio, it says. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. All right, uh, oh. Jay, there is one thing. Uh, our room is going to stop in seven and a quarter minutes. So we might need to restart um, it. Do you, want to, do you want to just do that now and get it over and done with? Yes, I think cause this is a good place to, to transition now that you're joining. Okay, fantastic. And excuse the fact I'm using headphones. I know I'm probably going to look stupid, but it... I don't have an external mic, so you're just not as stupid as your reverb. beach. <laughs> well, my beach is cool, man. Um, what else did I? I just I just found something else on here. I've lost the settings now because um, I never use this bloody thing. But I just found something really cool where you can like put on shades and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to end it now? We'll all dial back in. Yep, sounds good. I'll send yeah. out the links. Cool beans. Ah, okay. Right. Bye bye. That says we're back in. Yes. Uh looks like Jay is still trying to get in. Yeah. Hey Jay, you made it. I certainly did, sir. How are you? Good. I see you have uh left the beach and you are now uh some kind of in the undergrowth. Ant in the undergrowth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, is the short answer. Um sorry, I'm just juggling a few other things at the same time. Um so where would you like to start? Why are you interrupting my day? It might not be a holiday, but I've got lots of things to do. No, actually, it might be. It is a holiday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've lost the plot. Go for it's it. It's an annual holiday. holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Stuart and I were talking about uh, his involvement in the project and how he ended up joining. And then he had mentioned that it would be useful if you were also on the call to perhaps give some extra nuance into how you found him and how we got him. Yeah, um, so um, let me try and remember what the conversation was. I'm pretty sure it involved threats, guns, and a horse's head or something like that. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds <laughs> yeah. on brand for you. I, I, that that yeah, was no. for me. That was for that was for me to take you, uh, sorry, for, for me threatening you, Jay, to take me on in this project. But, That's what that was for. That, 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 that sounds good to me, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to keep it. Um, Okay, so assuming, I mean, I don't know what you guys have been talking about, so I'll just come in at this from, I don't know, whatever place in my head it is currently. Um, but Stuart and I have been talking on and off for quite some time. Uh, we've obviously both got some shared interests, Stuart, with his experience in, in, in casks and, and and then with me when originally kind of initially researching this project and learning and understanding that Pretty much everybody accepts that there's about 60% of aromas and flavors in whiskey that actually come from the cask. So it made sense to try and learn more about that, hence reaching out to, to Stuart. And Stuart is, you know, thank, thank, thankfully, he's, he's, he's the kind of guy that loves to share knowledge and information. We had a few conversations um, about the craft, about the specialization, about how important it is to get really, really good sources of wood. But then one thing that always baffled me was something I'd read where if you take two casks made from made at the same cooperage on the same day from the same wood from the same tree uh, and then you you know take them to the same distillery fill them with new make from the same batch and leave them to mature um, there will be a variance between those two whiskies once they're matured and some studies suggest that that variance can be as much as 17 percent so I started to try and understand why that variance is. And, and I guess without sounding too boring and to try and keep it as, as simple as possible, it, it's kind of like comparing it to steak. You know, if you, if you take a cow and it doesn't matter what that cow is, whether it's an Angus cow or whatever, 
different cuts of that cow are going to taste different. You know, that's just the nature of, 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 of meat. And whether that's different in texture, different in flavor, different in aroma, um, or how it interacts with, with different styles of cooking. But if you took two cows from the same field that are fed the same way and you took exactly the same cuts, then the strip loins are going to be the same. So then it was kind of trying to look at and understand how, how, how can you relate this to a tree? How can you take a tree and work out where are the T-bones and where are the strip loins and where are the rumps and, and, and the caps and, you know, and the, the, the roasting joints and things like that. And from a logical point of view, you obviously just go work out a way to, to, to analyze that wood. And, and there's a lot of science behind that. And there's a lot of studies that have been done, but typically most ways of analyzing wood become destructive. You have to take a piece of wood, you've got to grind it up into little pieces, and then you've got to put it through various processes. Um, chromatography, primarily, you can, you know, you can use gas chromatography or liquid chromatography or whatever. Um, so there's also a huge amount of expense behind that. You know, you've got to have laboratory conditions and you've got to have loads of scientists and things like that. And, you know, let's be fair to Cooperage is as, as fantastic as the, the skill and the, the art and the craft is. You know, they're not scientists and they don't have laboratories. So how can we try and take some of those learnings and, and bring them into Cooperage? So... You know, so if you, you speak to Stuart, I think I think he talked about it quite a lot on the on your last call when you're talking about kind of toasting and charring the wood to release the sugars. Um, so that when you've got your new make spirit or whatever other alcohol you're maturing, when you've got that in the cask, it starts to leach those things out and, and bring it into the spirit and, and help develop the flavor. Um so um I'm rambling. Can I have a cigarette break? Can I cut that out and, and just basically just like have a fag? Uh, is it is it getting too boring phil yes <laughs> if if you can start to analyze staves um individually um and then also you know in massive volumes as well if you can start to analyze them and start to understand exactly what's in each individual stave but do that in a cost-effective way that doesn't require a laboratory. And you do that by a mixture of, of, of using different types of analysis on it. So basically our concept was to start looking at this from a point of view of... We can then start getting some really good predictive indexes. So we can literally infer based on what we can see from this accessible analysis versus what we've done with with the laboratory analysis and then over time combining that with the fact that we've got our own cooperage where we're going to be putting out a hundred thousand casks a year fifty thousand obviously for us and fifty thousand for the rest of the market um, but then also we tie that in with the distillery so it's not just about understanding what qualities are in the wood before you start maturation but the end result of that and then you start building up this really really rich data set where you can after a few years, start predictively modeling exactly what is going to come out of a cask and how that's going to influence and shape a whiskey. Does that make sense? Yeah, Me, I think totally. I'm following. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know that Stuart gets it, but you know, <laughs> let's be fair. <laughs> we we we've we've got to get you to get it. Because if you get it, you're you're you know, you're a kind of a sample audience member, if that makes sense. I think it's for me. It's it's these kind of conversations about how deep you go in. What's that level of knowledge for for your audience? And does it get to the point where you actually lose them because you do become a lot more kind of boring, technical? Well, well, let's okay. Let's just say technical, and and people yeah. then try they switch off. I'm I'm a liberal arts person. I don't do science and 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 whatever those adam things you were talking about okay so let me try and blah, 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 blah. How, what's another way to to simplify it without being too nerdy um i think i think the meat analogy works you know comparing yes, it yeah. to the fact I, that you, you had me with me. down a cow you know in the same way that butchers have learned how to cut certain bits out of the cow for specific uses specific cuts you know specific flavors 
we, what we're trying to do is 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 apply that to wood. Now, obviously, we can't go out into a forest and start, you know, scanning trees with with a, with a Star Trek gadget of some description that tells us what's going to happen. But, but taking taking sawn timber. Sure, tannins. Tannins are probably the most explored, for want of a better word, or the most, um, they're the thing that people are most knowledgeable about because tannins are pretty much in everything, you know, from from fruit and and, and wood and plants and, and, and all the rest of it, and even tea. You know. But taking it to that next level of, of detail. So yes, you can get some understanding of, this wood for this cask, this is going to be better for a really, really heavy bodied mm -hmm. red wine. Uh, I don't know, not my field of expertise um, and, and don't really have a field of expertise apart from the occasional sarcastic line in, in WeChat groups. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like without, without setting up a laboratory within the cooperage, there's a there's a limit to how much that can be done at the cooperage side and trying to make that technology or that science more accessible at a cooperage level but then also being able to run that from a cooperage understanding and a spirit production understanding and then combining that with the final data set which is what was the end result um, and then using that end result to then use in future when selecting staves. So it's kind of like a big circle of data that constantly keeps feeding itself. And the more we do, the more we learn. And the more we learn, the more accurate we can start to be mm -hmm. with, with our predictions. You know, one of the things that I think is is really important is because of that chance element within you know maturing spirit you know you're taking 200 casks in a high cube from a cooperage and because of that 17 percent variance you end up in a situation where yes if you're a big producer if you're producing you know seven and a half million lpa or 20 million lpa mm. it's not really a big deal if you've got an off cask because you can just marry it out. So if you've got an off cask, the same with wine producers, you know, what do you do with an off cask? You mix it in with 10 really good casks and then it kind of balances out. But if you're a small producer, you know, it can be the difference between making a profit and making a loss that year. Because if you've got an off cask and you can't marry it out because you're not making the volume and it's not good enough to be a single cask, it literally becomes wasted. You either sell it as bulk product on kind of the wholesale market to recover some of your cost, or you pour it down the drain. You know, well, really I mean, is that simple. Yeah, well, it is. It is really, you know, because if you, if your focus is is all about single casks rather than mm -hmm. you know a blended mold or whatever, then yeah, you're right. You're, you're limited to what you can do, and I think that's really where you know even now the big boys have either had to create. Uh, new products because of the, mm. the style and character of spirit they've had. Yeah. Well I mean there's 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 obviously that industry story about you know why why did the world end world end up with uh with fireball and uh <laughs> you know the kind of the 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 the, the the joke about it is 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 that's that's what they do with all the Canadian whiskey that just wasn't good enough to be bottled as whiskey. You just add loads of cinnamon and sugar and and you make fireball. And you know, there's similar stories about about Irish whiskey and Baileys. You know, but again, as a small producer, you don't have that option. You know, Baileys and Fireball, these are things that sell millions of cases every single year but if you're a startup distillery and you've got two stills and you've got 200,000 lpa capacity you, you just re you really can't do that so you know this is one of the things that stuart said to me is the benefits of having the knowledge from 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 this new process this new approach that he can then share which is part of his mantra you know he's had a fantastic career and you know excuse me for speaking on your behalf here stuart but 
you know, this is one of the reasons that myself and Stuart got along so well is his his view that I've had a great career. I want to share my knowledge. I want to do what I can to to improve the industry as a whole. And most of the innovation comes from the smaller players. So helping those small niche startup distilleries is is where he can give his give back, so to speak. And and that's where we kind of clicked when we were talking about this technology, because if we're doing all the research here and the development here, and we then share that, that benefits all of the smaller players that otherwise would just be taking a loss. If they had a situation where they can analyze that delivery of 200 casks and work out that these 100 are going to be for really good premium stuff, and these 50 here maybe for the middle of the road housey house brand stuff, and these ones here probably not so good, so maybe what we do is we, we season them. Maybe these are things that we're going to fill up with sherry and leave for two years because that sherry will add the depth that the cask is lacking at the moment. Yeah, I was, I was, I was asking Phil earlier how do I actually get to Long Yan? That was maybe one of the more important thing. In a so, canoe. Uh, at the moment, right now, I, yeah. have, I, the I thought I was going to have to swim or something, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Uh, so... A couple of questions that just you know come to the forefront of the mind are: What do you consider to be the most exciting aspect of joining into a new project? Uh, so, I mean, that could be anything from the installation of the equipment to the training of the staff to seeing it all come together, or is it more of a hands-off? You just kind of play puppet master and watch everything come together. Like, what, what's the best part to you of the new project? I mean, I'm I'm very much hands-on, uh, and uh, you know, we had. A we mentioned earlier about you know this new project and, and everything that was involved in it. Obviously, coopering and the art of manufacturing crafts is is my backbone, uh, my background, and uh, you know getting involved in it. So you know, Jay was talking earlier about the kind of the whole process flow. It's it's key to getting that right. Then it's looking at the the training of individuals, because obviously with it being a skilled craft, you then have to, you know, nurture that talent through uh, and, and, and educate people on on the way of manufacturing casks. So it's not just one particular area that kind of excites me about this whole project, about this project. It's the whole part of it from, you know, from leveling the land to the, the first cast going out of the cooperage and into the distillery for filling. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So each little part is its own separate and unique joy. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it, it is all about kind of educating people and helping people and, Jay obviously gave you a, a kind of an oversight of really quite maybe kind of technical information and, and the cask side of it, which is fantastic. I mean, they're all, uh, all of these kind of processes have a, a, a huge benefit to the development of spirit. So for me, you know, combining my experiences in the industry and being able to um, kind of help in this, what I see as a fantastic project, it's a fantastic opportunity to really, you know, drive that uh, that kind of knowledge and, and share that education with people to put Nine Rivers really uh, up there with uh, major distillers companies to, to demonstrate the, I suppose, the desire and 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 the passion and and the interest that that everyone that's involved in Nine Rivers has spent so far, and to for me personally to be to be part of that is is a great privilege and honour for me. 